visiting with our Shap of the Week, Blake Sabraco, defensive lineman for the Westlake Chaparrales. And let's just get it out in the open. You imitate everybody, <laughs> in, including me, which I, I think you laid on me after the spring game. Oh, yeah. Let's just say it's the uh, sincerest form of, of flattery. But what are some of the other impressions uh, that you got on lockdown here in the field house oh, at Westlake? Oh, gosh. You know, being a part of the program for four years, I've gotten... I'd want to say Coach Dodge down after, you know, listening to a bunch of his speeches. Coach Salazar, I've got down a lot this year. Coach Vosick, been working him for two and a half, three years now. Definitely got him on lock. And so I'd say those are my big three that I go after. So, sure. so we'll get to that in just a moment. But I think levity is such a big part of team chemistry. Playing a role is not necessarily being a starter or being a backup. In this program, it seems like everybody has their to-do lists. And obviously we've seen you have the opportunity to play. You've played well, you got tackles behind the line of scrimmage. You've done well, but that's not your role day to day. What is your role day to day? I've loved my role. Starting back in the spring uh, during exit interviews, I came in with uh, Coach Vosick and sat down with him and kind of checked off the list. And he said, what do you expect to get out of this season? What do you want to do? And I told him, I expect to be one of those guys for you that David or Trellis get you know, tired or injured. I want to be your guy, you ready to go. And as well as, you know, in day-to-day stuff, I'm, I'm a big note taker. If you ask any of our D-line guys, I take a lot of notes on our scout, who we're scouting that week, and then uh, try to get it out to them. LT Week did a huge scout report, about four pages, turned it into all my guys, Coach Vosick as well. Little things like that where if my impact isn't as made in the 60 plays that were out there in defense, trying to be that next man up, big role player for the rest of the game. We talk a lot about technology and the use of it outside of the field house. And so much is done on the physical side and we hear about practice and we hear about weight training and all that, but we also hear that there's a ton of mental, you know, from the neck up training, oh, yeah. if you will, that kind of effort, the the fact that you would take time from what already is an incredibly busy schedule, that you would take the time to break down and take notes individually to help your team win. You have the ability and the, the mindset to be able to go, okay, this is what I see. Let me take this note. This is what happened on this play. Let me take this note. What is your notes say? Give us an example. I'm thinking back to LT week, breaking down their offensive line. You know, I'd take little notes as, you know, left tackle, big kid, smart kid. Guess what? He's a sophomore. He's super front heavy. If you work a little inside move, come back out inside him, he's probably going to lunge on you. So you can probably beat him outside. Don't get in the middle of his chest on a run play. He'll take you for a ride. But um, little things like that, that I think help them out. I know that you have loftier aspirations, but Coach Sabraco is starting to come out in our Shap of the Week interview. Do you, do you have any kind of aspirations to maybe get in and, and, and teach this game? It's, yes, sir. It's funny that you mention it. I, I've done Pop Warner coaching as well as some little rec WYBA coaching uh, along the way, especially for my little brother. Next semester following football, I'm going to come in and be a teacher assistant for Coach Jones help them out through spring ball. As of right now, Coach Yeager actually just landed me a student assistant gig for uh, like kind of a football coaching position at TCU. And then I also interviewed over the summer at Miami of Ohio and Ohio University where I have a bunch of family and they both accepted me onto their staffs upon acceptance. So that's definitely something I'm looking to get into and be a part of. Does it help you relate to the coaching staff because you're already thinking about that type of future? You love the game of football. It's incredibly clear that you like to play it. You're actually good at it. Uh, others might be better in the program, but at the same time, the fact that they have fun with you, the fact that there is a, a jovial relationship between you and the coaching staff, they're already kind of treating you like you're one of them. Do you do you feel that that relationship a little bit? I mean, they're not going to come for me for any game plan or anything. I wouldn't expect that. But anything that I can do on my half, I like to be the middleman, so to say, in between what the players are reporting and what the coaches need to hear and kind of relay what they need to hear back to our players and take what our players are saying and get it back to our coaches if I can. I think what a lot of people miss, they put so much attention on the game. They put so much attention on the preparation. And I think they miss the fun. And I know Coach Dodge and Coach Salazar always are talking about on on Friday, this is your reward. Being able to survive that preparation, and I know that the mindset is don't wish away the preparation, mm -hmm. but the preparation leads to the reward, which is playing the game. Is that how you see it? Last season, I had a very fortunate opportunity to be a JV bring up for the playoffs. And what I loved about that most was I literally had five weeks 
to sit there and learn everything that I could about the program from inside and out. So I was really more taking in rather than even producing on the practice schedule. I ran with the attack team, which was a great opportunity. So now to see it come full circle and now I get to get into the game as well as some of the others in some of these other games, it, it really, really does come full circle. All the hard work pays off for sure. This is not lip service because I've heard it ever since I started interviewing Todd Dodge. The attack team players are the most important players on the ball club. Most people don't observe the prep team as he does. There are people that talk about it, and I think there are people that think that they give it the credit that it is due. As a, a cerebral player, I think that is where the edge of a Westlake athlete that plays football is, is the intelligence factor. And I think Coach Dodge has gone out of his way to make sure that you guys understand in this program the most valuable commodity is the attack team. Every one of us that isn't necessarily starting right then and there, we give a look. So our attack team guys, our, our look that we get on a team each week is the most vital preparation that we, we have, period. A big win over Lake Travis. Uh, you're part of consecutive win streak now from Game 3 district season. And it's starting to come to an end. You, you actually look at the football season at the beginning of the school year and you're like, wow, we've got all this football in front of us. But now you're starting to see Game 7, Game 8, and now you're into Game 9 and Game 10 with the idea that playoffs are, are going to happen. But the guaranteed games at Chaparral Stadium are starting to dwindle a little bit. What are you going to take? from this experience this year into your next endeavor? Memories, friends, I'll never forget, um, right after we had lost to Cy Fair in the playoffs, I was riding on one of the coaches' carts down to the freshman center, and I was helping out Coach Wilson move some stuff, and he was telling me, he was like, don't blink, do not blink, because before you know it, you're gonna be sitting there and you're gonna say, home opener's here, end of district's here, and now we're riding in the playoffs. So I'm sitting here thinking to myself, man, there went off season, there went spring ball, all these lasts, there went PC. And now I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, at this point, and as we hope and we, we plan to play in a state title game, this week is our eighth game, 50% through our final season. And so not wishing away any of the preparation, getting up at 4.30 in the morning and saying to yourself, I'm doing this because I love it. 20 years from now, with a big ring on my finger, I wanna be saying to my buddies, this is what it was all about. So that's special. I think a lot of people wonder about how you prepare for a game. As a backup, you have to say, I have to get ready to play as if I am going to play because in a moment I might get to play. Mm -hmm. And you've had the opportunity to get on the field. You've had those aha moments. What was your first taste of varsity football as a Westlake football player? My first big play, Aikens. First or second drive, second half. Twos went into the game, went in there, and it was either first or second play. We had a, a Liz call. I was a three technique, lizzed inside, felt one running back cut outside and then one vertical and I, I, I chased the back and then probably had a three or four yard loss and that got me pretty fired up, did a little side bump with Coach Vosick running off the field, so feeling pretty good. You guys have a unique relationship. He's talked about you, you've talked about him. You know, whether you're a college athlete or a student athlete, you can't be afraid to talk to your coaches. You can't be afraid to not ask questions. You're not one of those guys. You are not mm -hmm. afraid to ask questions. Looking at what he's done in his football career and what he's done in his coaching career what connects the two of you besides just he's my position coach so what a lot of people don't know is I have an adopted older brother who came here from Maui Hawaii his middle of his junior year um, back in 2008 and he graduated in 09 he came here and actually played D-line for coach Vosick and he's one of the last I think two coaches from that or three coaches now with coach Jones back in that roster kind of to get to see him from time to time growing up as a little kid and then now to the point working out through high school. When I tell you he's one of my favorite people on this planet, I'm not gonna lie to you, he really is. Our relationship's very unique. I have seventh and eighth period as a teacher aide, so I'll go to him in Coach Yeager's class and sit in and talk about his time as, at Duncanville and how he came here and all, all the experiences. He's my, my go-to guy when it comes to football. Uh, day in and day out for sure. His knowledge is off the charts and he's got those tricks of the trade that I think a lot of people don't realize how valuable they are because you can take all the talent in the world, all the speed, all the size you want, but if you don't have the, the inside knowledge of, of what it takes to take your game from one level to the next. It's all about attitude. And, and he seems to have that ability to put into words what that attitude is. Is that, am I on the right track there? Because every time I've, I've had a conversation with him, it's like, man, I, I can see why kids listen to you. The thing is, what makes it so special about him is he's not your, I'm gonna see you third period, I'm gonna see you at practice kind of coach. 
He's checking in with you. He's making sure your grades are good. He's making sure everything at home is good. And that's something special that you find in a position coach at you know this high caliber 6A level. I'm very blessed to have him be a part of my life, as well as Coach McGuire coming in from Lockhart, where he was the DC. They, I mean, they both just jumped in and kind of been second father figures to all of us, which is really blessing. It's it's interesting because I often say that you know you're going to spend more time with your coaches here in the next few months than you probably are with your family. Oh, but my I, mama hates it. She doesn't <laughs> see me. She doesn't see me. She hates it. It is like a family, and from what I I know families make fun of each other families are are always quick to uh to jump in and talk a little trash without being a member of the d-line text thread i know that uh it's it's pretty oh, in, it is pretty intense sniping gorillas we go at it, <laughs> it um, is when you're the the butt of a joke you're the first one to call it and you start oh, making memes and everything oh oh yeah i've had my handful of memes that's that's <laughs> that's for sure and um that's that's a good part is everybody's joking around with each other everybody loves each other and everyone knows that so when you know everybody in a group of people loves each other and they care about each other deeply you're able to have those jokes where you know you don't have to take it as personally and countless gifs i've sent <laughs> some backfired on me some i've been i've dropped the bomb on those so that's pretty cool all right so give us a little tony salazar and, and again Ooh. we're we're on the radio here so he's phenomenal a lot of it if they're in three by one and they motion the slot into two by two just check tampa it's that easy d-line you, you know even present hog hog that's it and so he'll do a bunch of stuff like that that's it that's that's a big one or give it give it a baby you know, all those those are good <laughs> so give me a little coach dodge oh one of the things i love about coach dodge is regardless of what time you see him say, hey coach, morning to you gentlemen, good good to see you. It's always morning to you, which I've always thought is unique. Coming into meetings, morning to you. Close up with a little of me. If we're closing out, I mean, that's the way to go. Right? It we is the way to go, right. absolutely. Uh, been watching you for years. I mean, it, you gotta pick up. Everyone, everyone in the locker room knows about it. Joe Taylor alongside John Nidell. This is Westlake football. There's the punchline right there. Outstanding. He's Blake Sabraco, our Shaft of the Week. Thanks so much for doing this. Thank you for having me, appreciate it.